Good afternoon, Antenna fans. It's KDYP here to explain to you what balanced and unbalanced means. It's all the rage right now to say that that I've got a balanced antenna or unbalanced, and I need a balan or an unan to make it work. And the implication is that balans and unans, which refer to balanced, balan, or unbalanced, which is an unan, somehow that has to do with an antenna. That is false. As I've explained in my other videos on this balance topic, balans are for transmission line to transmission line couplings because Basically, the characteristic resistance that can be of a coax is about less than 90 ohms, and for parallel lead, the minimum is about 120. So typically, 50 or 75 is coax, and 300, 450, and 600 is twin lead. And it is not possible to connect them together directly, so that's what the balance or unit are for. They are not for antennas. The problem being that balanced and unbalanced don't apply to don't exactly apply to transmission lines and antennas. That's not what those terms mean. What those terms mean refers to the amplifier used to drive them. And it's just incidental or coincidental to then refer to a round 50 ohm coax is unbalanced. No, the two conductors inside could care less. They don't know the difference. But our round transmission line, if you look in your book for your radio transceiver, the antenna output is 50 ohm unbalanced. And that means the circuitry inside the radio without anything being connected to it. So here's the meaning of unbalanced and balanced. And especially important when it comes to grounding. <clears throat> At the top, unbalanced is what's known as single-ended, a single-ended amplifier. The triangular shape is an amplifier, top is the plus power supply, the bottom is ground or chassis, and the load is referenced from the amplifier output, which swings from plus to ground, reference to ground. The fork symbol is chassis. That is a single-ended amplifier. That is probably what's in our radio equipment. Our 100-watt radios probably have a single output, I doubt they're push-pull. So by virtue of one side of the load being referenced to the chassis and using so-called coax and using sockets that fasten to the chassis, then we have the convention of the transmission line being unbalanced, which again is about the amplifier, not the line, because the line didn't care. Go way, way back to the 1920s and 30s when vacuum tubes were weak. We'd get a few watts out of the tube. For low distortion, we'd drive it class A. And Class A has an efficiency of maybe 20%, and 80% is wasted in heat. But Class A is very clean, very linear. And back when tubes weren't so good, that was important. So to increase the power, we go to Class B, we get 75% power instead of 20, but a lot more distortion. If we put two Class B amplifiers in series like this in the balance configuration, which we used to see a lot in public address systems with the floating speakers and still see in stereos. We put two amplifiers in series, ground them in the center, have a plus voltage on top amplifier and a minus voltage on the bottom amp. Then we get a swing from plus to minus rails and we get twice the number of amplifiers. If they're both Class A, we get 40%. If they're Class B, we get 75 times 2, which is 150% out of, out of 200. So if we run a Class B, we get, still get way more power. But also, still have the Class B distortion and the addition of something called crossover distortion. Now that can be crossover can be pretty much eliminated and if we're careful to bias the class B amplifiers we get a rather clean push-pull output so that's why that topology is used in the old days we'd have two amplifiers and a link coupling set up 
a great big coil <clears throat> to the tubes and a smaller coil inside that that was on a rotary shaft and that was a, a rotatable coupling that uh, that coupled to the antenna without regard to ground of any kind which is why we could get away with grounding antennas back in the past but we can't now because now we ground the antenna connected to the single end of the amplifier we've grounded the chassis of the radio and violated the electrical code <clears throat> So ham radio concepts of grounding are stuck back in the 1930s. This, and this is well known in the public address or PA system and the stereo system world, where the speakers are floating, they cannot be grounded. If the, if the plus and minus and the resistor are a speaker, and we ground the bottom terminal of the speaker, we bypass the lower amp and destroy the top amp. <clears throat> because now the top amplifier draws way too much current. So push-pull really means isolated from chassis, and there are lots of reasons for that. The uh, classical HP 651 generator has a push-pull balanced output that keeps it away from chassis. <clears throat> lots of noise on the chassis. So that's where the idea of balanced and unbalanced comes from. <clears throat> It's not about transmission lines and not about antennas. So why is everyone and their brother stuck on using balance? Well, the reason is, if we go back to the old days of tube amplifiers that may have had an output resistance of several hundred to several thousand ohms, we can't use 50 ohm coax for that. And coax did exist as far back as 1860. We use the high resistance twin lead. Well, that doesn't exist anymore, except in rare exceptions. The standard is 50 ohms. So everyone's making 50 ohm dipoles, for example, <clears throat> and they won't match because they're making the mistake of falling for another old ham myth called higher is better. Higher not only means obviously much more transmission line loss, much more difficulty in installing the antenna at height, because around here, about the best I can get is 30 to 40 feet. <clears throat> the trees are upwards of 80 feet at the canopy, but there's no support up there. And the problem is they install them too high without regard for the fact that the height determines the viewpoint resistive value. And so it won't match. And this is when you start throwing balance on it. Well, it appears to work, except now the balance is heavy and it pulls the viewpoint down. And if you watch my antenna videos, that causes reactance to the feed point and kills the bandwidth. <clears throat> Radio Engineer's Handbook on page 791 has a handy dandy graph of effective antenna height on radiation resistance in typical cases. And see the horizontal lambda over 2. That's a horizontal antenna half wavelength. That's more or less what a dipole is just for argument's sake. See, the height of the antenna is about 50 ohms at about 0.15 wavelength. That's very close to the ground. If we make the mistake of putting that dipole at, um, in this graph, about 0.35 wavelength up, <clears throat> that implies a 90 ohm antenna, and there's no line that will match it. You can't get 90 ohm coax. It's special, but we don't have it. And twin lead can't, be, can't go down to 90. So you're screwed. So when they install their antennas too high, which is basically anything above about two tenths of a wavelength, then the antenna feed point is permanently mismatched and they can't fix it. <clears throat> That's when you start throwing balance at it. And it's the wrong thing to do. The right things to lower the antenna. Here's an, a, just a rough example of a dipole, 40 meters, a wavelength is let's just say 65 feet. According to the graph I just showed you, 50 ohm height would be about 0.6 wavelength, which is 10 feet. Now my 20, my 40 meter dipole is 75 ohms, and it's about 20 feet. <clears throat> that would be 
about 90 ohms at 0.32 wavelength, which is 20 feet. So I've also showed you in my antenna videos, wire diameter makes a difference. And the radio engineer's handbook reference doesn't tell what diameter is used. It's just a, just a general graph. But this is when and why people start using balance, and it's a very bad thing to do because they don't belong there. <clears throat> it's a band-aid. They're lossy. And they're wasting a bunch of RF on transmit and receive both by putting the antenna up too high. And realize that feed line, that excessive height antenna with that extra 50 to 75 feet of transmission line also eats up the receive signal. And this is, this is where I'm hearing a lot on the air of if I can't hear somebody else because of storm noise and they say they can't hear anything. That's because their antennas are deaf. Their antennas are mismatched. Too many losses. They can't hear. So, get rid of the ballon, lower the height. Again, ballon and unun refer to balanced and unbalanced amplifier topologies, not the transmission line and not the antenna system. It's an old myth that dipoles are unbalanced, therefore they need a balance plus, because this is unbalanced and that's balanced and that's all BS. My dipoles are proof that all these theories are false. And this is what happens as a result of, of hams not learning circuit theory. We don't get this exposure to where these terms come from. If we just start looking at antennas, we, uh, we, we don't understand where the error is. So that's why it's important to also learn about electronics and radio circuits. So get rid of that worthless ballon, lower that antenna until it matches. KBYP did it.